welcome to this month's edition of This is Arlington. I'm Aspen Bailey. And I'm Jack Perry. This is Arlington is Arlington High School's monthly TV show featuring stories from around the school and community. This show is produced entirely by AHS students in the television production class. Now let's move into our first story. In this first piece, we will take a look at how two students used downtime during the pandemic to start a new lucrative business. Aspen and I bring you this special report. Hey, HS Tigers. Recently, we took a deep dive into a student-led business owned by Dalton Harrison and Price Jones. We took a look at how it affects their school lives, their personal lives, and how they work on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely crazy. I mean, you're limited to so many things because you're not 18, still living at home. I mean, it's, it's definitely a challenge or whatever. And, you know, you have to, you know, take as many opportunities as you can get and, you know, make the best out of it. When asked how they handled business during the hybrid schedule and how they adjusted, this is what they had to say. So that's been the biggest struggle. I mean, last year we were very fortunate to have the hybrid schedule and having three days to be able to, you know, have three full days of work. And so we were able to get a lot more done. But now, you know, we're having to fit, you know, our 50, 60 hour weeks, you know, into very small portions you know, after school and then our weekends too. So it's very hard also keeping your grades up too. You know, you get done working, the last thing you want to do is open up that iPad and do the assignment. You know, your body's tired, you want to go to sleep, but you know, it's, it's, it's a grind and you know, you just got to dig deep and push through and get it done. We asked Price Jones where he'd like to be by next summer. Um, our company, you know, if we're growing, then we're good and uh, We've done a lot of business this year, over six figures in revenue, total revenue. And so if we're growing and we're giving and making sure that, you know, we're staying humble, uh, that's all we can ask for. And uh, just to be able to do this full time and be able to make a living, uh, as long as we keep working, uh, that's where we want to be. And so uh, hopefully we'll be, you know, off having a lot more work, a lot more yards and uh, everything like that. If it's going up, it's good. Alongside Aspen Bailey, this is Jack Perry reporting for AHS Tiger Life. Now let's review some AHS news from this school year. In this path, past month, we had homecoming week and our homecoming football game. Although the outcome of the game wasn't ideal, we got a chance to cheer on our homecoming court. Our homecoming queen was Ashley Doty and Brandon Kelly as homecoming king. Thank you students for dressing up and participating to make that week fun and successful. Seniors, we are so close to the finish line. Make sure you're applying to colleges and getting all important paperwork turned in before deadlines. It's about time to start sending out those ACT scores and applying to, for some scholarships. Make sure you are staying on top of your work. We are so close, don't give up now. Congratulations students on completing the first quarter of the school year. Now that the second quarter begins, make sure you're trying your best to be exempt from exams. Absences don't count against you as they are excused. You also want to make sure that your semester one average is above a 90. We are already halfway through the first semester, so make sure to finish strong. This past weekend, Student Council held the SASC convention here at Arlington. Ms. Kelly and the Student Council members hosted other high school student councils from across 15 different states. Thank you to Ms. Kelly and the rest of the Student Council for representing our school and community so well. Now let's take a look at one of the many clubs in Arlington High School has to offer. Corinna Shearshan has Paul West bring us the first look of the AHS Fashion Club. Do you like exploring different clothing styles and aesthetics? If so, then you should take a glimpse into the AHS Fashion Club. I wanted to start it because we didn't have anything like it and we didn't really have like anything actually in the community like at all kind of like this and I wanted to do that because I felt like it would offer like a really good space for people to kind of explore their interests and I wanted to meet other people that had the same passion and kind of like help them develop that and help myself develop it. All kinds of people are encouraged to join this club especially fashion lovers. I always try to make sure like my outfits look good when I'm coming to school. I've always liked like looking at fashion. When I was little, I used to like design clothes. So. As well as learning how to sew, you will discuss a variety of fashion-related topics. 
we're gonna do some sewing, we're gonna do some designing, we're gonna do some like explanations, we're just gonna have people talk about what they love and you know, further our interests. You may even be able to make a career out of this. I would hate to go to college for it and then it not pan out and I have pretty high hopes for it, but definitely as a career, yeah. Even if you're not into fashion, you might learn something by drawing. I don't know, like all the different styles and they all kind of intrigue me, I guess. You can like play with silhouettes and colors and textures and kind of tell a story with it. And there's like nothing better in the world than like putting together an outfit or like styling something and then having it like click and like you feel it, it's really good. But yeah. Overall, the fashion club is lots of fun. Um, from what you've told me, it sounds like a lot of fun. For sure, I think it's fun. Do you, you think it's fun? I think we have a lot of fun actually, yeah. Alongside Paul West, this is Corinna Shusan reporting for AHS Target Life. As we embark on a new era of Arlington Television, we also begin another chapter in the never-ending story of sports. And for that, let's get into this month in sports, featuring all the different highlights and stories as of October the 7th, 2021. We start locally here at Arlington High School, and the Tigers are approaching the tail end of their most recent football campaign. And to describe how it's going so far, I'll just let that speak for itself. Yeah, not great. The Tigers are currently two and five overall, sitting dead last in the 6A Region 8 division of Tennessee. And to finish at 500, they'd have to win their final three games, including two home matchups against Germantown and Collierville and a road matchup against Houston. As in other news, the Lady Volleyball team just wrapped up their season. Women's soccer is coming to a close as they look to capture another district title and basketball will be starting up sooner rather than later. In other news, the MLB playoffs begun with the nation rejoicing as the Red Sox beat the Yankees in the AL wildcard and the Dodgers beat the Cardinals who went on a 17 game winning streak in the NL wildcard. In other news, the Memphis Grizzlies had their first preseason game of the season end in a false fire alarm as they take it over the Bucks, 87 to 77. Andrew Wiggins ends his vaccination holdout as he will play all home games for the Golden State Warriors. The Nets and Wizards are not so lucky as Kyrie Irving and Bradley Beal continue to not believe in science. And college troops are tipping off sooner rather than later and will heavily feature a Penny Hardaway-led Memphis squad that could definitely end up becoming the best Tiger basketball team since 2008. And that's going to do it for us here on This Month in Sports. For Jason Rangel, Nathan Newtok, this is Roman Cleary signing out. Thank you, Roman, for an update on sports. On each episode, we spotlight one senior here at AHS and share their high school story. Let me turn it over to reporter Justin Byers. Thanks, Aspen. There are 500 plus seniors, plus seniors here at AHS. We wish we could share all of their stories, but today we will focus on one of those seniors who is a standout individual who everyone loves. This is our spotlight on Hunter Reich. I think some of the main goals I have in day-to-day -day life are just uh, being intentional with the people around me, being someone, being a guy that everyone can, you know, count on or uh, have a friendly face to. I think Hunter's a great guy, good kid, good student, seems to have a real good uh, moral base, good character guy. I've never met a person that said a bad thing about Hunter Wright. I would say just, um, I try to be a friendly person to everyone, you know, uh, a nice guy that people can go to and talk to. Uh, when they need anything and just a friendly face. I do, I, I think that everybody that seems to come in contact with him likes him, he's just got that kind of personality that attracts people. I think Hunter's a great kid, hard working. Uh, I don't know a single person that dislikes him. His only downfall is he's a Mississippi State guy. Hot, hotty toddy, go Rebs. <laughs> being always, always being a guy people can count on. Um, be relational with people get to know people, um, and see how that can impact others for the better. Oh, his work ethic is excellent. He works very hard. He puts full effort into everything he does. I think he's going to be very successful at whatever he does. He works real hard. Uh, track season last year, he had a little foot injury, but he kept working through it. Um, so I think he has a very good work ethic. I know he takes a lot of AP classes. Uh, he's getting ready for college. That I was a freshman, and there was this guy named George Avalos, and he was a senior. And I remember one day at track practice, 
I asked him, I said, what's your advice to me as a freshman? He said, man, just cherish it because it goes by super quick and just like in the blink of an eye. So just cherish it, make the most of it, and uh, do your best. Hunter truly is one of the best guys I've met. I've never heard a single person say anything bad about him. It seems like he genuinely tries to be successful at everything he does. I've known him since second grade, and he's positively impacted everyone's life since then. That's crazy we're all seniors now from then. Time flies. you today. Let's see what rep reporters Landon Chris and Jalen Cousin have in store for us. This is Landon, a Arlington's Animals, and I will be your guide on an amazing journey through Arlington, giving facts and information on the animals that reside here. Today, we will be going to the Arlington Animal Shelter and talking with the veterinarian on how to take care of your pet. They need to make sure that they have a nice bed that's clean, free of fleas and ticks. Um, they wash it on a regular basis. Um, they keep their yard free of any debris, um, picked up free of poop, um, no big sticks, rocks, so that they don't chew on anything. So safe of anything that the dogs can um, choke on anything that may be a, a safety hazard to them. We like to do yearly or twice a year checkups depending upon the age of the animals. Um, for our adult animals and then for our puppies they usually come in about every three weeks um, and that helps us uh, make sure that there aren't any intestinal parasites, no infectious diseases, no fleas and ticks, heartworms, make sure that we get them spayed and neutered, make sure that there aren't any colds, ear infections, allergies, make sure their foods and medications are right as well. It's based on how much they weigh and how active they are. The less active they are and if they are spayed and neutered, they're gonna need a little less, just like if a human is in inactive, they're not gonna need to eat and or drink as much. Our younger ones definitely need more exercise. Um, if there are underlying issues, if they have hip issues, if they're much older and slower, have heart issues, they're not gonna need as much because they're gonna tire easier. Um, but the younger ones, as long as it's cooler outside, they can have as much as they um, want to within reason. Alongside Jake Stoop at Savannah Worley, I'm Lynn and Chris reporting for HS Tiger Life. Hi, I am Jimmy Cousin and this is Mom and Kristen, and I'm going to teach you a cut. I am a uh, black belt. I'm a... Actually, yeah, this is not an actual black belt. This is a black belt training, but I'm going to teach you a cut. A kata is a series of moves that you would do to prepare for a fight, and you're like pretending you're fighting, but you're not actually fighting. It's like a choreographed dance. So, I mean, this one is called Peon 4, and this is not difficult, but Malcolm is going to go over with me and I want you guys to do it too. So we're going to do leg position and then you're going to the left. You're going to do the toe stance and then your hands are going to go up like this like an iron hand. Then you go this way and then your arms are going to go like this too. And then you're going to lift your leg up, X block, then you're going to stick your foot up and then do a check. Then your hand's gonna be a cover hand, back fist, side kick, and then double strike, check, back fist, double strike, pigeon toe goes here, make sure you're safe like here. You're gonna go knife hand strike here, then you're gonna push your foot like this, you're gonna yell like Kia, like this, Kia, here. Then you go here, punch side kick, double punch, Kia, here. Over here, same thing. Give! And we're going to do three checks. One, two, three. And make sure that after you go three, your right foot is going to come up. As your both hands come up, you're going to snap your foot like that. Knife hand. Then you go back here. You're going to X box. You're ready to position. Then back. Now we're going to go over it fully.
Hope you enjoyed our first episode. Until next time. This is Arlington.